as well as this new industry push. Well, as we heard in Shilpa's report there, most Indians who access the internet do so through their mobile phones. And that's why international network operators were queuing up when the latest round of licenses went up for auction, despite an earlier sale being mired in controversy and corruption. Telenor is a Norwegian business with about 40 million users in India under the Uninor brand, although it's much bigger in other parts of the region, especially Bangladesh. But it's just become only the second telecoms firm approved to own 100% of its Indian operations. Shilpa Kanan asked Chief Executive John Frederick Buxas why this was so important. First of all, I think that is an important step that uh, the sector uh, is liberalized to the extent that uh, an operator like us can own uh, the operation 100%. For us, it means that when we take that step, it shows uh, the commitment that uh, we're long term and that we want to build uh, a position in, the, in India. Having said that, of course, it requires that we are competitive that we are actually in the position of living up to our market offering subsesta to our customers in this country, uh, which is an important uh, promise to our customers that we want to be the most efficient uh, seen from a customer perspe perspective. You mentioned subsesta as your model, which means the cheapest in the market. So is affordable model the only way for multinationals in India to succeed? Affordability is a very strong uh, and necessary message in this. Uh, if you're going to achieve a uh, hundred percent uh, penetration with people enjoying uh, digital services uh, all over India, uh, but of course also in the long term, the industry sector and, and us need to be profitable. And profitability goes with the ability to uh, to build uh, the next level of investments, which is always going on and rolling into new generations in our industry. There's still a billion people in India who are not on the internet. But realistically, how easy is it going to be to get these people online? Well, if we take a glimpse back in history, when we started our first Asian operation back in 1995 in Bangladesh, it was almost unimaginable that the whole of Bangladesh should, be, uh, should have the possibility of having a mobile phone. More or less, we are there today. Uh, which means that it's not an impossible thought that the same happens with uh, Internet access. It creates a lot of opportunities for people getting access to information, education, medical services, financial services. So I think the industry really needs to have the ambition that over the years to come also will connect everyone. India's telecom sector had one of the worst scandals in the country over allocation of spectrum, and that dragged your company right in the middle of it. So did you ever regret investing in India? That was uh, for us a very challenging period. To stay the course, to deliver continuous services under those circumstances, and surviving that phase. And after that, uh, I think we can say that uh, after renewed spectrum and uh, in, under the new auction that came around, I think we have um, proved that we have a long-term ambition and showed uh, very significant visibility in the circles in which we operate. There's a new government in power in India promising to bring about change. As a foreign investor in the telecom sector, what do you expect from the Narendra Modi government? The government here has signalized uh, very important ambitions uh, on behalf of India and also raising challenges for the, uh, for the industry, namely to connect everyone, to really build digital India. And I think we have a contribution to put into that. And the Internet for All uh, thought that uh, really could bring everyone on board is a very strong uh, proposition. And in that sense, uh, access to spectrum, access to uh, the, a proper framework that stimulates in that direction is the number one contribution from, from government. And so the spectrum story is a long-term story here in India. And I think there are, I hope there are new solutions to this uh, going forward. Now, the streets here in South Mumbai are usually swept every morning, but in many other parts of the city and the country, you find roads that are dirty and which have rubbish strewn all over them. A movement to try and change that, headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has got plenty of attention. But will it also get results? Samir Hashmi has been taking a look.